Uh, we're about to start the next talk right here. So I'm very happy to introduce Hani Miel, who's going to talk a little bit about the struggles um, you're facing when trying to find the next Capture the Flag adventure and how he is um, proposing to solve them. So please uh, join me in welcoming Emil. Thanks. Hey. Hey, so I'm going to talk about, about CTF in a box. It's the story of what problems we found when playing CTFs in terms of the framework, how we tried to solve the problems. We built a prototype, tested it, and uh, the problems that came up after that. So first, who am I? Well, I'm Emil. I um, am Han Emil on most platforms, studying computer science at Düsseldorf and playing CTF with Flexorilla or sometimes as a single player. Yeah, and let's start with the current solutions. Because when playing CTFs, uh, we currently have like about three main platforms we play on. Um, the most used framework currently uh, I'm seeing is CTFD. Uh, CTFD is like the first thing you find when uh, Googling for, hey, I want to host a CTF. Uh, what do I do? And the second thing is hack the box. That's another case study uh, for like. Well, case study, uh, it's a bit um, another framework for hosting CTFs, but uh, you can't use it because it's actually closed source, so uh, you can just play with them. And uh, the last solution are custom frameworks. So these are frameworks uh, used by teams. They build them themselves, like at this year's CTF. So a CTFD looks like this. People who are, may have played CTF may have seen it, because most CTFs are hosted on uh, using CTFD. And uh, overall, it's, yeah, it's pretty basic. It looks a bit bootstrappy. And I'll come to what the problems are later. Uh, hack the box. So uh, the people who have seen it looks like this. Um, this is the machine uh, view. Because hack the box di um, differentiates between machines and challenges. Uh, challenges are like simply files uh, thrown at you where you have to find the flag. And machines are a bit more. It's like you've got an actual machine, need to uh, find flags in the actual services running on the machine. So it's a bit more. And uh, custom ones, like uh, this is an image of uh, the current uh, CTF running at 3063, uh, organized by HXP. It, it's pretty much uh, CTFD, but built by their own. So what are the problems with this? Well, uh, let's start with CTFD. Uh, there aren't actual problems, in my opinion. Uh, it's mostly static hoster for files you want the people to uh, use for the CTF and some custom infrastructure for uh, a scoreboard, uh, register, uh, for reg registration and stuff like that. So yeah, you could probably use an Nginx for that. Um, Hack the Box is kind of closed sourced. Uh, I say kind of because you can actually use it. You see how it's built up, how you spawn uh, things. You could build it yourself. That's what we did. And um, the problem here uh, we had was when playing Hack the Box, we had some reverse shells in the root of the uh, challenges and other problems like uh, multiple people writing into some challenges and some files were just there that shouldn't be there. And uh, that was really annoying sometimes. Like, we started a challenge and saw, oh, there's a reverse shell for uh, getting root in root. Uh, we don't have to do anything. And um, they are shared challenge instances. And a problem we saw with that, that was um, you have multiple hundred people playing the same instance. Uh, we had the problem at Alice CTF uh, during the camp, where we also found a little problem where we could see what other people were uploading to the challenge, which kind of helped us. And we found that could be optimized. And the third problem, well, problem, it's not really a problem, are custom frameworks. Um, you might find errors in custom frameworks uh, allowing to get flags that aren't uh, used to without a uh, uh, actually solving the challenge. So uh, it's now a ping pong between uh, finding problems, finding solutions, finding problems, and finding solutions. And we'll start with the solutions. Uh, the simplest solution we tried to implement for our CTF at a local hackerspace was uh, generating single challenge instances for every player or team. This means every challenge we built was simply a Docker container we spawned somewhere. And for everyone who wanted to play it, we spawned a new Docker container. And uh, we thought, uh, first thought uh, that uh, it would, might bring a lot of overhead, but it actually didn't. Uh, we spawned multiple hundred containers, and it all worked out fine. 
Uh, the problem with this is if you put everything into a Docker container, uh, Docker uh, escapes and sandbox escapes get really useful. So um, it would be fatal if someone could break out of the container. And we've got solutions for the problems of the possible solutions for the problems. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you can just uh, put everything in a VM, so uh, challenges are bundled in one VM, or uh, NS uh, use NSJL to um, isolate the processes, and uh, stuff like that is just a measure to stop the people from actually breaking out. Uh, another sp uh, solution would be to actually make it possible so the people can break out. So actually, do, you don't want to make it possible, but uh, you don't want the people to actually have anything from breaking out, like custom flags for custom teams. Uh, we did that by implementing uh, our Docker containers as the, uh, okay, so we implemented the challenges, so the, envi uh, the flags get uh, put into the Docker containers via environment variables. So when you're starting your Docker container, you just uh, set an environment var variable with your flag, and in the Docker container, you've got a little script pushing the flag to the place you want uh, it to be, and then uh, unsetting the environment variable and deleting everything else so there's no trace of the flag where it shouldn't be. And that worked out pretty well. So that's the circus prototype we used. A little uh, story for that. Uh, we had the 18th anniversary of our hackerspace uh, this year, and we thought we'd need a CTF for that. And in the week before, we realized, oh, it's in a week. So we quickly started building a prototype for this, called it Circus, because it looks like a circus. <laughs> and uh, that's an, a graph showing how the uh, containers interact with each other. And the goal with us was uh, we wanted a place where the teams could register and get a known companion. A companion in our system was like a place where people could go and spawn uh, individual containers because uh, the companion spawns a VPN container and packs all the other um, challenge containers into that network. So people go, get the VPN config, and can access their challenges. Uh, it's really similar to like how Hack the Box works. A problem with this was um, we've got one, container, uh, per, uh, one companion container per user or per team. And we've got n challenges that can be spawned. And if we've got n teams with m challenge computers, uh, we get a lot of containers. Uh, what you are seeing here is just a listing of all the containers we had spawned. It was like um, after day one of the CTF, we had like 10 participants or so. But uh, we had like, uh, I think it was about 50 containers at that point, uh, which was quite a bit. And uh, at the end of the CTF, we had like uh, about 120 containers up and running. So you might think, oh, a lot of containers running, people doing stuff in the containers, that must cost a lot of um, computational power. But it actually worked out. We had uh, set up a virtual machine with like uh, eight cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and it always looked like nothing at all was happening. Yeah, uh, until someone uh, set up a crypto miner and had fun with that. So we went on a machine and saw, oh, whoa, where's the load coming from? And uh, we identified it. It was some Redis container someone of our team set up, uh, not me. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, we had some people try weird names. We fucked up the sanitation a bit because it was all really quick. And that's a learning for everything. Um, that doesn't work. Also, the XSS you are seeing here uh, that the person tried wouldn't work. So it was kind of weird. And we set up a super basic scoreboard. So as you can see, we tried building a CTF framework on our own. It kind of worked. It all was built in a few days. And um, it was like really shitty CTFD. So what we want to do now is find out what we want to do and what we do not want to do. So uh, what we wanted to do was allow people to spawn containers with their challenges. So we solved the problem of multiple people uh, acting on one challenge, uh, on one instance of a challenge. Uh, by doing this, we won't want to allow uh, them to spawn infinite containers. Uh, maybe some of you have played Alice CTF or Camp CTF. Um, that was pretty fun because um, there was a challenge, the uh, Nexantic DevOps challenge, where uh, it was exactly like this. You could spawn containers or a complete um, a setup for you to play in, but you had to uh, do a proof of work. So uh, calculate something so you couldn't just spawn challenge instances as much as you like. 
Uh, another thing you might keep in mind when doing this, uh, we had to keep it in mind a lot, was mount the Docker socket, uh, don't mount the Docker socket into everything. As fun as it is to spawn Docker containers from Docker containers, um, it's like a giant security hole. Because if people have access to the Docker socket, they can uh, just literally spawn uh, Docker containers and do shit. Yeah. Um, do's and don'ts uh, allow players to execute stuff in containers. So just having a container with some static files or so uh, is fun, but we were like, we want to have more. And uh, allowing people to execute stuff in containers um, can be a problem, but um, you have to limit what the people can do. And that's the thing. Allow people to do stuff, but don't allow them to do too much stuff. And that worked out in our case, but as said before, we tried it with like 10 people at our local CTF, seeing where the problems get when we put really good CTF teams on it, and if they are able to break out would be really interesting. So um, as I said, don't allow, uh, allow people to do stuff, don't allow them to do too much stuff, and implement uh, techniques so, they, um, so it works out. And one thing we had to keep in mind, uh, keep, in mind keep things sim simple. Because um, during the CTF, we, uh, I realized we built a lot of stuff. It was a bit overcomplicated and made, made things a bit too hard to fix. So um, I'd keep in mind for the future, if you're building a CTF framework, keep it as simple as possible. So if anything breaks, it's like a five-minute job to fix it. Um, yeah. So if you're too lazy to listen, uh, let's Get a recap. Create new platforms. CTF platforms are really interesting. Um, I, found it a, uh, I found a lot of topics I could work into when building this. And I'm not at the end yet, so there's a lot of things I still need to look into. But um, a lot of play players to play the game um, and limit the bad stuff. And for people thinking, why Docker? I had that in our local hackerspace. Uh, people ask me all the time, why are you using Docker? There are so many known exploits for that. Um, yeah, finding alterna alternatives was like, uh, yes, I could use the alternative, but I'm used to Docker, so I actually wanted to use Docker, and it was kind of nice. So if you know a better solution, uh, find, uh, find the solution, implement it, and try out the CTF. Another th thing I wanted to say here is that uh, while using Docker, my might be insecure if you're doing this stuff. Uh, you can implement a lot of stuff uh, securing this, like uh, I said, implementing custom flags for teams. So if a team has got a custom flag, uh, it can't break out of the container and uh, just get the flag from another team because it's, it's really team-specific. And that was a thing we wanted to do with the environment variable in the, Docker con uh, in the challenge containers because we could um, upload a... Um, start the container as we went. Yeah. So um, that's actually the end. That went quite fast. Uh, what I wanted to say now is that uh, sometime next year, we want to play the Circle CTF with the platform we built, uh, just to try it out, but in a larger scale. So if you're an active CTF player, watch CTF time. We're going to be there sometime, probably and uh, organize a completely new, new CTF with pro, uh, fun challenges. Uh, I've got uh, some challenges we use for the DOF CTF with me, so if you're really interested in how this might look, how this might be different, what can be done, uh, come to my table at Dark Nebula. It's right over there, and uh, we can talk about that. Another thing I wanted to do is, if you're interested in discussing a bit of how this could be done better, also, uh, just drop by. Um, it's fun. And if you've got questions watching the live stream or so, just tweet me at Honeymeal. That works out. Yeah. So that was it. <laughs> so has anyone got any direct questions or so? Or any? Yeah, so we have uh, around six minutes of questions left. So if you have a question in the room, come to either the right or the left microphone here. Or we also do have a signal angel relaying questions from the internet. Does the signal angel have any questions? Give me a quick sign. No, it doesn't look like any questions right now. So okay. thanks again, Emil. You're welcome.